Thank you, William. Thank you for mentioning that, but there's some records here that i just seen and I haven't remembered for so long. Have you ever heard of Hong Kong Syndicate? No. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Uh, an amazing guy called Pletz, who lives in Berlin, contacted me and we did Divided By. Ein, six, seven, seven, six, five, Divided By. Um, a great record in, uh, for Teldeck in Germany. And also in the late 70s, early 80s, anybody heard of Romanelli? He was the keyboard player in a group called Space, Magic Fly. Yeah. And I remade Magic Fly with Didier Moroni, the composer. It's on my um, Spotify. Have you ever heard of the Skids? And Bill Nelson. And uh, Andy was here earlier, but I made Charade using the CR78 with the same drum pattern as the Nola game a year before. <laughs> <laughs> the same sound. Um, on this album, we had the Fairlight. We had the first Fairlight. And the Steps is a sample of Peter Gabriel, which was a preset, where it goes, whoa, whoa. And me and Richard James Burgess made all the links to link all the tracks together. So the beginning of Fate of Grey was me and Richard Burgess. And the Dancer and Blocks on Blocks, which I wrote in Berlin. Tar was written by Steve Strange. And Mal Paso Man was me and Midge, Mind of a Toy was Steve Strange, Moon of a Moscow was me and Midge, Visa Age was me and Midge, and The Steps. Anyway, the point is, they're all on vinyl, and um, only recently we uploaded 300 tracks on Spotify who pay nobody nothing, because you can't get 300 tracks on here. So I give you all of them, and I give this back to my friend Roger. Thank you. Thank you so much. But the point of me dominating that is because I haven't seen these records for long, so long. And we don't hold vinyl in our hands anymore. And we don't adore the artwork. And we just swipe left. And um, today's singles are one minute and 90 seconds. And that includes a repeat. So they're actually literally 30 seconds of music and then there's a build and then another 30 seconds of music and sometimes a drop and that's the end of it they're literally tick tock gone yeah. and music to me on my new album they're all over six or seven minutes long fuck tick tock music fuck <laughs> throw away 30 seconds on your laptop <laughs> on my new album i have Andy Mackay from Roxy Music playing 36 bar solos. I've got Earl Slick, Glenn Matlock on a beautiful rock song. I've got Wolfgang Ver who tells the best stories. And I've got Claudio Brucken, Zoya Beheld, Peter Hook, Tony Hadley. I mean, working and writing and producing music is what we do. Marketing and selling is what TikTokers do. And there is a big difference. And thank you, Rudy, for pointing out that I came here as a fanboy in 1978, searching. Might have been 79, because the Blitz Club was later. We did Billy's in 78. And uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra album I got in 78. So now I came here in October. And it was a thing called Oktoberfest. It was like a beer hall festival or something. Yeah. something. Lots of drunk Germans. <laughs> anyway, the point was, I came here in search of the music of the future. And that's what I found when I met Ralph and Florian in the Konigs Alley in the Malesh Club. And I was a fan. I'm still a fan, and I think the music industry is now recognizing super fans. They actually call you a super fan, somebody who really loves the music, whereas the 50 billion streamers who listen to TikTok music, they're here today, gone tomorrow. We're here for life. Thank you. <laughs>
So that was a great opening speech. Yeah. That was really good because I know that Andy talks a lot, so I prepared like three questions for Andy. <laughs> I mean, for you, I only have one, but it's nice to know that I don't need it. Well, you know what? To be honest with you, right? I have had dinner with people that you wish you could have, David Bowie, etc. Not many people talk a lot, you know? And now he's not here. And uh, there's a guy, his PR, <clears throat> got asked to go to New York. He said, oh, um, can I go in two weeks' time? And so, well, David would really like to see you now. And um, his PR guy jumped on an aeroplane and went to New York. And David talked to him and talked to him and talked to him. And three days later, he was dead. And it was his way of saying goodbye. And in a way, there are people that have said goodbye, but I said, oh, can I call you tomorrow? Yeah. And I actually remember meeting Bill Nelson on Earl's Court tube station. Yeah. He was with his Japanese wife. Hey, Bill, I just met Stuart Adamson, and I hear he's his phone number. And I said that he'd love to talk to you, and I gave him his phone number. The next time I saw Bill in the Groucho Club with Woody Woodman, see, and he said, I should have fucking called. I should have called, because he was dead, literally, weeks later. And today, all we read about is he's dead. Andy is 65, I'm 67. How long have we got? And everything you leave, album covers, what you said, the filming of this event, the friendships, your friends, fucking talk, talk, say it, tell people I love you, tell people, call people, write music. I wrote a song, it's not a song. It starts, Ralph Hutter. Florian Schneider, Karl Bartos. <laughs> Thank you, I said. Thank you. It's the closing track on my only album, which I only made because a guy said to me, I own the name Visage and I have Steve Strange. And I said, then you have nothing because you don't have me, you don't have Medure, you don't have our songs, you don't have our music. You just have a photograph on the cover and you think you can copy an ARP Odyssey and get a CR-78 drum machine? You think you can copy us? Go ahead. Five albums later, he's still going for it. Today, people are still paying 60, 70 pounds for my album. Only 500 copies made. Because it's a fucking work of art, right? That's what every album is. Like he said, radioactivity, Trans Europe Express, fucking work of art. And I tre cherish that stuff. And that's what we should do. And what did Andy say? There are some people who just shouldn't have made that shit. And I'll be kind. Yeah. Then you don't talk. <laughs> you just don't mention it. <laughs> so that is something that Andy and you have in common, right? I mean, the love, oh, yeah. the activity, Trans Europe Express, early Kraftwerk, and the noise stuff. Well, I was you, later you than Andy. You started out to be you I, a drummer. I'm a drummer, uh, yeah. but, uh, a drummer. Um, no, I'm later than Andrew because there was things like Sparky's Magic Piano, you know I mean? Uh, computer music was joke music, wasn't it? It was like, you know, comedy music in a way. Um, a, a, a popcorn, yeah? <laughs> you know, it was, I was more into glam rock then and Bowie and, you know, um, so I think even Autobahn was a bit of a novelty to most people, but they didn't listen to the 20 minutes, you know. Um, I did have the Ralph and Florian album because I just loved the photograph of the egg boxes, you know. And, uh, yeah. the, and I didn't even know, but I read a book by Ud Schut. How do you say his name? Emil Schut? Uh, yeah, Emil. there you are. You oh, say no, it. No, no, Uwe Schutte, you mean. Oh, yeah, Uwe Schutte. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Uwe Schutte. He's written a book. <laughs> you anyway, is You is how we say it. In, uh, in London, we have uh, artists called, um, uh, what are they called? Ralph and Florian and the two artists. I forgot it now. Gilbert, Gilbert and George. George. Yeah, Gilbert and George. <laughs> and they just stand there in the suits, right? You know. Anyway, the point was, uh, Kraftwerk set out to make art, you know, and if you listen to Brian Eno all the time, it, music is art. It is art, you know, it's just 
just won't hang on the wall. Now in the beginning, they played art galleries. Exactly. And Gilbert and George, there was a blueprint yeah. for Ralph and Florian. Yeah. They liked that, don't they? Which yeah. Image well, in my DJ sets, I, I sampled um, uh, Lee Barry. So I, I, I press, and he, he says, the only place I feel comfortable in is a nightclub. And I drop that every now and again in the middle yeah. of my set. <laughs> um, and I like to be inclusive. I've got Boy George's on my album too, and I've got a thing called Non-Stop Electronics in Pop Dub. And the dub is him, and Trent Moller is in there. I met him in Copenhagen recently, and hopefully I can play a track tonight by him. But um, music is art to me, and, um, and art is music. So hopefully we're all um, deemed artists and AI can now work for Universal Music Group. They don't need any of us anymore. Universal Music Group is owned by Black Rock and Vanguard, so fuck them as far as I'm concerned. Fuck the music industry. Just be an artist, make your own art, own your own name, own your own brand, own your own publishing, own your own everything. I just dropped my music to a sink I got the sink. No sink right company got me the sink. I got the sink. I go to the Cannes Film Festival and say, where to you get your music for the film? I can do it for you. Oh, but I need to talk. You don't need to talk to anyone. I own me. I own my music. I own my studio. I own my company. I don't own Visage. I don't own the past. I don't own the 80s. I just own me. Any music person making music today has to do what Ralph and Florian did. They set up Clean Klein Studios and they own their master recordings. And he said, could you distribute this for us, please? Ah, it's easy, you know, nobody will buy this shit, you know. And they release it. There you go. Rusty, before you get me confused. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you the one question, okay? <laughs> so as we're having a blitz night tonight at the Long Des Amateurs, well, yes. you advertised a blitz night. Yes. But I don't see 50-year-old people wanting to dance all dressed up. <laughs> to, no, they know. are. They are ready to But dance. I see people who'd like to hear some music. Yes. So I'd like to throw this out there. Um, would you like to hear some music that I am making? Yes. yes. Perfect. It's only, it's only a start to play some blitz stuff. Yeah. You, you can do and what it's you want. Not, it's your night. Okay. It's, it's, People would love to hear something. That's too. my point. Yeah. So, it's not a DJ gig. No. Where I'm going to play I Feel Love and just can't get it enough. And tell me why. Okay, it's not one of them. So, basically, it's some people coming into a room to hear some music by me and the people I collaborate with. Okay? And I will try to create it in a, a vibe. Don't forget, I haven't rehearsed nothing. I would just look at my computer. Oh, that works, that works, that works, that works. But you heard what Andy said when he heard Tiny Magnetic Pets, who I can now claim to have discovered because I made the That's first true. record. Um, and then introduced them to yes. some people. But I have to throw it out there. Chi Ming Lai discovered the hell of a lot of stuff. I mean, he's like a train spotter, isn't he? You know, yes. he's got a drum machine or a synth on it. He's there. So basically, he turned me on to nightclub and viol viol electrodes and a few people like that. And uh, with Tiny Magnetic Pets, I did a couple of more tracks. And um, I have an amazing beat that I did for them. So I loop that sometimes. So then I take my own beats from my own records and I make other records with them. Um, so the point is to answer the question is, I want to do a kind of live, seamless mix, which is what DJs do, of music I've made. What was the question? Well... <laughs> Look, really, I forgot, I forgot. Really, if, if, if I go 150 BPM, right? And you hear Hallo Gallo, you go, oh my God, it's Hallo Gallo. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Yes. And then you hear E Music, you know? I know? And then you hear the look and the sound of the voice. You go, fuck me, I like this vibe, <laughs> right? And then you hear, you hear Joy Division and you hear, you know, I mean, this stuff's So we are looking forward to the to, to Yeah, the so I might August. go there yes. or I it's, might go the other. Your night. Yeah. Yes. 
but still i want to know like when you started the blitz club okay. which was in covent garden yes and that was like after billy's right yeah. so first billy's that's why you and steve strange and some people started playing music and then well, you moved, mean, yeah. and then you moved on to the blitz club that is covent garden yeah what was it before blitz club was the blitz is a place theater. where drunk guys get robbed by young gay men <laughs> because they felt a bit horny and they were in the red light area and they thought he was a she but she was a he and they said hey red they go walk on the wild side and then their wallet was gone uh, this was the only kind of place that would allow you to take over the place on a Tuesday and play this horrible noise called Noi. <laughs> they wanted to hear the Bee Gees. <laughs> so the club was originally already called Blitz? No, it only lasted like three months because the pimps and hookers and scumbags that ran the club They named it. They wanted to rob all the audi our friends. And we said, no, he, the drinks, I mean, how much is this drink, you know? So I said, we're, we're leaving. And we went to Covent Garden, which was a lot more deserted and uh, industrial looking at right. the time. Yes. And uh, this place were like dead on a Tuesday. I mean, you might have had Clyde from accounts trying to get Tracy, the receptionist, drunk <laughs> on a bottle of Beaujolais. <laughs> And uh, the DJ played some weird shit called craft work and hey, have you got any Bee Gees? <laughs> um, and you went, no mate. And then Steve Strange walked in dressed as a nun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the only place I feel comfortable in. <laughs> so you play craft work, which song would you pick in the beginning? No, I would put the whole album on. Yeah? At nine o'clock. That is. Then I would play Roxy impressed. Music Viva live, some of the greatest drumming ever. Yes. And I would play Jean-Michel Jarre live. I would play uh, Flamand Herzen, which I bought here. Um, I would play Brian Eno. I would play Mobius, Cluster, Can, Noi. And most people left the place. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is this noise? You know, and now it's empty, ready to become the Blitz Club. So by 10 o'clock, listen to the voice of Buddha. And then they'd all get up and people start dancing, night clubbing, we're night clubbing. And I play <laughs> sound and vision. Grey blinds drawn all day. Uh -huh. wow. Nothing to do, nothing to say. Sound and vision. <laughs> Fucking songs that talk to you, you know? Always crushing in all the same a great car. Atmosphere. Fucking loved it, Perfect you know? Songs. Yes. You know? You played the Riechmann, or Reichmann, you say, or Wolfgang Riechmann, right? Wolfgang so Wunderbar Riechmann, big, Wunderbar. Yes, yes that was um, a big Abend, 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 is it called that? The, the Abend Licht. Um, I played Nina Hagen, the reggae. Right. I fucking love Nina Hagen. Um, I played. Um, Space. Uh, I was just a broken head. I stole the world that ever stumble, slide and stumble, slide and stumble. And you introduced me to automa auto, automat. Yes. Yeah, in yes. London. I yeah, loved it. Show, loved yeah, it. Yeah, I was at the show. I loved it. Yeah. No, I mean, I was the worst DJ in the world for people who didn't <laughs> like my music because I just knew I had 200 people coming. So you're like, I mean, the amount of times that people tell me I'm the worst DJ ever. <laughs> you know. You know you're doing the right thing when you're the worst at it. Because that's how we all started with punk. That's what that was very important that people don't like it. Well, yeah. I'm a drummer, right? So does anybody know RAF, Red Army Faction? Do anybody know who um, Patty and Judy Nyland were when they were called Snatch? So Judy Nyland was Johnny Thunder's girlfriend. And uh, uh, Judy Nyland, no, Patty was Johnny don't know. Thunder's girlfriend. And I used to, as a punk, go to a club called a Speakeasy where they would all be drunk and the DJ was on heroin and the owner would say, you can have what you want from behind the bar and I'll get you a burger and can you put the fucking music on? And I go, yeah, and I go in there, go for all the records and fight. Ah, oh, the B-side of this is amazing, you know, and I play all these B-sides and things that nobody knew. But everybody was drunk, it was just some background music. It was really nice to do that. And I found this record 
called No Surrender, which is basically about the Red Army faction, which you shouldn't mention here. But that made me go to the cinema and watch Fass, 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 Fassbinder, Fassbinder All right. who was a real amazing filmmaker. And I used to go to the late night cinemas all the time and bring Mitch Ewer with me because he was a lonely guy in London who didn't know, ah, come with me, I take you everywhere and buy you some fish and chips. And um, we went to the cinema and as you know, The Third Man was very influential to the Southern Vienna. Yes. And obviously Mitch's coat comes from Casablanca, you know. So no, I mean, film noir, I'm a big fan of uh, obviously um, German film too. Cabaret too, yeah. right? Yeah, Fritz was, Lang and, yeah. and, and the design and I read Albert Speer, I'm sorry. But I read the book because I really was impressed by the Cathedral of Ice. Do you know yeah. what that is? It was the lights at the Nuremberg rallies. And I really like the lights, you know. <laughs> and, um, I mean, you have some great quotes in my book. Oh! You, you talk about all this and electricity. And then my editor got back to me and he said, I mean, does this guy know what he's saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you have proof that he's okay with this? I mean... No. And then, no, I said, no, no, that's Rusty. He yeah. likes it. He's, he's like this every day and you can print it. <laughs> I'm like this all the time. And you know, there's like this a thing in England called Marmite? Yes. Oh, that's yeah. I fucking hate Marmite. Well, well, that's me to a lot of people. They fucking hate me. Um, I'm older than Andy McCluskey. Um, I'm younger than Mitch. I'm younger than Glenn. I'm younger than like a lot of the people that are still doing it today. Uh, but I'm still a DJ on a Saturday night in London where I don't tell anyone. And I play music to 20 year olds. Because it's the easiest fucking thing in the world to do, but to write a song and make an album and do it, that's really, really difficult. And as Andy McCluskey said, some people have made a load of shit. Personally, I think I made three or four songs of shit on the Beat Boy album, because I was under fucking pressure. But, you know, there's a few good things in there, and they could have been a bit better, but when you've lost everybody in the band and you've got a guy going, you have to deliver it, you make a piece of shit, right? So I've never done it ever again. So I've just made a track called Dusseldorf. Has anybody heard it at all? Yeah. Yeah. It's very simple. There's a track on the, uh, on the Craftwork album, and it has one word. Metropolis. What does that word mean? Metropolis. The movie by yeah, Fritz Lang. So I want you to do do so dorf. It's the same word. What with the um, motoric beat? It was very important to have the 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 the, 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 the yeah. So tonight I've invited new That's men. Not the motoric beat. Do you know new men? <laughs> new men are uh, been around about ten years, I suppose. They're a German band. So a couple of the guys are going to join me on stage tonight. We're going to do another song that I've written. I've written with um, Wolfgang Tells the Story, which is my story. So he read it. And Zane Griff, anybody heard of him? No? Yes. Yeah. Well, 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 Zane, I invited to sing some songs. And then Chris Payne invited him to write some songs. So they wrote some songs together. And they wrote a song using the music that Chris Payne sent to me. So I was very upset. Because if you sent me, dun, 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 da, da. It's cold outside. Yeah, I might have wrote a song. But if John Fox said, here's my new single, dun, dun, da, dun, dun, da, da, you know? That's scary. I would be very upset. So <laughs> bottom line is, um, I kept Zane on this song, on the chorus, because Eric, who's here and performing tonight, sings the lead. But I wanted to go, I, <laughs> I wanted to hit that bit. I should have read between the lines. You have, you have some great songs. Of yeah, the so there's a song. It's I mean, called the Eric song is great. Yeah, Eric. One, uh, he's yeah, Eric's on my new album. He sings on uh, two or three songs. Yeah. 
Yeah, I really like Eric. You, have you heard of Cult With No Name? They've got like 11 albums. <laughs> no hits. That's I really band. like them. So uh, We're all looking forward to this. So yeah, what so I like, it's half DJ, half live. Yeah? yeah? Yes, what I like about you is your enthusiasm, man, <laughs> for music, right? You remember that Every song? Time, man. Do you remember that song by The Specialist? It's called What I Like Most About You Is Your Girlfriend. <laughs> Hi, Georgie! <laughs> yeah. Um, I know I shout and talk and so, that. It's, so it's, it's called enthusiasm. <laughs> and if you look it up in the dictionary, it's a gift from God. And I am a fan, you know? In, as far as I know, everyone in this room is a fan. And if you had not had... 40 years of the most amazing music. If you hadn't had it, if you'd never heard David Bowie or Kraftwerk, if you, imagine, imagine if you, you were a teenager and everything was, sh, what do you call it, schlagen music, you know? <laughs> Every word of word of you were like, oh shit, and then you have to go to some shit fucking job, oh no. But these guys set your veins alight. They, they're your life. They're your blood. You know everything about it. The book, the film, the cover, the, it's everything. Exactly. So yeah. you, have a, you have a great knowledge about music. Huh? You started out as being a drummer. You like Klaus Dinger playing drums. And you, oh. you are in the skits and already wearing a Kraftwerk t-shirt. <laughs> yes. That is the picture I saw. Right? Well, they, the Kraftwerk t-shirt, did anybody ever see it? It said Kraftwerk have taken the perspiration out of drumming. That's what it said underneath it. <laughs> and I was in a punk band in a sweaty club with the sweat pouring down the walls doing like the skits in the Rich Kids and uh, Betty Bright. Do you know who Betty Bright is? She married Suggs. Okay. So we had Clive Langer on guitar, Glenn Matlock on bass, and I was in her band for a while, you know, just a drummer. All right. And um, I played the drums with Phil Linnett on his album, drumming on Top of the I Pops. Mean, you, are, you are on drums. For the top of the pops trailer. Yeah, but you know what else I'm on? <laughs> I'm on the loudest band in the world. Do you know what that is? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They had a band. And I made the loudest band in the world with Peter Godwin. And I found Peter Godwin because of a song called Criminal World, which David Bowie covered on his Let's Dance album. And now Peter Godwin has retired to the south of France, yeah. and I'm still working. <laughs> Only De Krupp's covered one of my songs. Anybody else? Yes, which was a great song, The Under. Yeah, but you didn't uh, know that I went to a gay bar in New York and saw all these men, Harter and Schneller, Schulter <laughs> and Schulter, Heiss und Schweiss. And I was like, I have to write a song about this because there was this amazing connection between men on the dance floor. Don't forget, they were making movies in those days with, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Rocky, uh, uh, dressed as a gay guy, an undercover cop, going out in New York trying to find the gay killer, you know? Cruising. Cruising. Cruising, yeah. yeah. And they were doing all these movies like that, yeah. I made a record called So Many Men, So Little Time. <laughs> but it goes, du, 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 you know, which is uh, Pete, Pete, what's his name? Pete, dead or alive, you know. Yeah. You know, you can program a drum pattern. Yeah, you program a drum pattern, right? Everybody goes, Michael Jackson. Uh -huh. And I go, no, it's Hall and Oates. You know, when, when I'm a drummer and I can't, I've got a microphone here, right? But when I create a drum pattern, it can be simple, but you think sexual healing, Marvin Gaye, what a drum pattern, right? You just know it, it just starts. And, ooh, and then you think, in the air tonight, it's not the beats, it's not the beats. You know, oop, 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 where's the accent, you know? And now you just get a kid in the bedroom and go, tick tock, tick tock. You go, hey, if I hope he doesn't have to be tick tock, you know. And you know, when you're a drummer, and uh, if, has anybody ever heard If You Want Me to Stay by Sly Stone, which I covered with Ronnie, who is a, ma a man but not a man, i.e., Ronnie is a woman, but she had a low voice and she dressed in clothes and people thought she was a man. And then Annie Lennox copied her. <laughs> but anyway, me, Barry Adamson, Dave Formula, went into the studio 
and Mitchell went into the control room and he had the mini moog and he just had two octaves. Boop, boop, boop. And a bap bap boop, and I played the drums and we did it once. And that was it. And then you get, oh, electronic music, they can't really play. Well, Barry Adamson can't play. John McGeer can't play. I mean, Billy Curry can't play. Where do these things come from? Where does this thinking come from? You know, whereas Kraftwerk simplify it all. They make it so simple, but that bass line, I just have to Which finish. Dun, 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 dun. So I remade Kraftwerk, the model. Yeah, the model, I mean the bass line. The yeah, but if you go on my non-stop electronics in pop dub one and two, which I released recently, it says Catwalk, the model, right? And what happened was the music publishing company wouldn't let the model be used in the TV documentary called Blitzed. So I said, that's okay, I'll just write something called Catwalk around the world. And then I sent it to Kraftwerk for clearance. And they said, yeah, that's not the model. So then I took Ralph's vocal <laughs> and I put it on it. And I said, what about that? That is the model. I said, okay, okay, you wrote it. I produced it. Can I release it? He said, yeah, sure, as long as it says I wrote it. And I went, brilliant. So I got on my album, Catwalk, the model. Well then, because I've done all the music, I put Boy George on it. And he then sings a song, which we wrote together about a Jamaican children's home where all of the Jamaican artists that had become famous were all orphans. And it was run by Sister Ignatius. And the song is called Sister. It's beautiful. Boom. Dum, 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 dum. It's like great. So then I mashed them all together and I made the non-stop electronics in pop dub mix. And then I included in that Wicked Game one of my favourite songs ever, but done by Brent Muller. And I love that mix. But none of it can be really available because I don't own it, so I just put it up online. But now they're stopping that. Now, like I did a load of mixes with you too, and they weren't released. So I put them on SoundCloud and MixCloud, and then they've now got technology to track even a a mix and then they pull your mixes down. Pull your... So in a way, in a way, we're trying to be creative and you can't be. I don't mind, you're not selling it, are you? You're not selling it. You're not profiting from it. Somewhere in between, you lost me. I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not one London visit that I don't meet you, right? We always go out. We always I'm out talk every about day. music. Every exactly. Night. So Rusty is my good friend in London. Except not, when I talk too much. Uh, you like <laughs> basically every day. Yes. <laughs> but it's hard to place a question with Rusty. In case you have one, that's the chance. Give him. Well, I'll try and be brief now. I've said enough. But will you all come uh, later? They yeah. are coming. Am I going to have come all the way to Dusseldorf <laughs> to play to three like? Three people and somebody brought their dog. Get a dog sitter. No, the place is sitter. packed. The place is packed on a Saturday night. Yeah. Yes. But Colt and no name are on, so come and see that. Yes. What's the questions for Rusty? Yeah, hello Rusty. Um, in DJ working, you played uh, Simple Minds in the um, Changing Link or I Travel. Uh, have you contact with Simple Minds or do you a big fan or I have not a remix or a produce, not, uh, not remix for Simple Minds track? Yeah, when I toured with the rich kids, with the skids, Betty Bright. So I toured the whole of the UK, went to Northern Ireland, did a couple of TV shows in Munich and Belgium and stuff. You can see what I'm like. I just want to meet everybody. And when I did the Spanner Ballet Tour and I did the Mediur Tour, I just take that bag, one backpack, couple of pants, just a little bathroom bag, 
and I go in shops and buy t-shirts and throw them away. I like, I like um, Edward de Bono, simplicity. I don't own nothing, who gives a fuck, throw it away, next, black, 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 just wear black, throw it away. I don't care about possessions, material things. But I meet people, I meet artists, I go to things. And I went to Bruce's record shop and got the first Simple Minds acetate. I had life in a day. And I was playing that in the Blitz on an acetate before they released it. I also signed the guy from the Berlin Blondes. I don't know if you know who they are, not the band up from up there, Robert Farrell. And we made a song called Tomorrow I Set Sail. We didn't do well, but I really like him. If you, see, if you seek it out, kind of, kind of sounds like the cure. But yeah, I loved Simple Minds. And then they went on tour with Magazine. And I saw that tour. And Loudmouth Rusty was shouting at the enemy, like Andy said, they didn't give it. They, they were still going on about the clash. And I was talking about Superminds, Ultra Vox Graph, <laughs> you know, the, the normal and Depeche Mode and Soft Cell. And they, they, they weren't interested. As a matter of fact, Marmite, oh, fucking Rusty, oh, God. Talking about some fucking band from Essex called Depeche Mode. What, what a joke he is. I don't fucking care. Where are they now? Hey! <laughs> so, would you accept this as an answer? <laughs> <laughs> so, what a basic well, yeah. answer. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. As a matter of fact, when I was in the studio with the skits, I was in Rockfield making that album, and I got taken over to Simple Minds, who were about to make Real to Real Cacophony, and they offered me the job as the drummer, and I got them Kenny Hislop. Have you heard of him? Yes. Yeah. He was in the band with Mitch Slick, and he used to call Mitch all the time, and I was like, why isn't he in another band? He's a great drummer. And he got the job in Simple Minds, but you know how, you know how he got fired? He was on tour with Simple Minds and he didn't pay for something in a shop. <laughs> I think he forgot. And uh, he got arrested and kicked off the tour. <laughs> Unbelievable. But there you go. That was bad luck for him. Any other questions? Yes. First you. Hi, Rusty. Hi. Hi. Um, online you keep talking about your memoir. You've got great stories. Is that still a thing? Is it going to be... Well, I, I told a joke during COVID that I wrote 350 pages. I actually got Chi Ming Lai to edit it, and he's brutal, shit, 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 nobody cares, who gives a fuck, and I ended up with nothing. Um, and then I told the other joke, then my lawyer read that, and then I ended up with some pictures, because you can't say anything, you know. You can't say anything because you'll be sued or, you know. And then I met people that make books, and I uh, thought, okay, let's just do a load of photographers. So I got hold of Sheila Rock and uh, loads of photographers, including Helmut Newton, who foundation, because he did the Anvil album. And I kind of tried to do a sort of cash-in coffee table book, but then everybody wanted these pictures. So now in September next year in London at the Design Museum, there's going to be an exhibition. So now what I do is I just send them everyone. And they, they, people who have clothes, people who have records, people who have memorabilia, people who took photographs. So in a way, um, yes, my story, most people know, including Rudy, like he said, and I've done a thousand interviews, and we've got AI, and somebody will just fucking press a button and put into it, and then they'll write some shit. And it will all be acceptable. But you won't be able to do the warts and all. You won't be able to do, you know, like Peter Hook, you know, his book. Um, and I think what happened to Peter Hook is abysmal. And I think the music industry is abysmal. And I think that poor guy killing himself in Argentina is a fucking example of it. And I just think there are a lot of people who get severely fucked up by the industry managers of people, and there isn't a mental health thing for, oh, you were a star, now you're fucking an Uber driver, how does that feel? You know, and your girlfriend's now with someone else. There are a lot of people got damaged by it, and can you put that stuff in a book? No, you can't say that. Can you tell people that 
people, uh, there was a guy in a band, Screamer Delica, he, he killed himself. You know, it's some real sad shit out there. And people go, yeah, but nobody wants to hear that. You can you sleep you can. with Madonna. And you go, fuck a book. I don't want to fucking do a book. Oh, you can say anything. You're a great diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Come on, though, it's One serious. more question <laughs> for Rusty. Yeah? It's serious. Hi, back to the Blitz days. Um, there's a metal plate on the old Blitz Club uh, remembering to the first uh, performance of Spandau Ballet. Do you remember the bands playing live there and how important was it for the club uh, and how maybe uh, did uh, Spandau Ballet become the house band of the Blitz? Do you remember that time? Yeah, of course Thank I do, you. of course I do. Um, they did extremely well from being uh, a not a very good band to walking into a room full of people that influenced them, including me, musically and uh, in their visuals, their art, their artwork, their covers, their photographers. In actual fact, do you know the albums by Grace Jones? Yeah. Um, Warm Leatherette. <laughs> those albums where she covered all of the songs that Chris Blackwell heard me play when he came to see Spando Ballet. And he came into the deep, what is this song? What is Private Lives? I said, it's the Pretenders, it's a great song. What is Warm Leatherette? What is Night Clubbing? I mean, he just covered every fucking song on the Grace Jones album. And he heard, obviously, released Love is the Drug before. But when he saw all these young people loving Roxy Music, Love is the Drug. So in a way, if you walked into the SO36 in Berlin, or if you walked into the Romy Hark like I did before I opened the Blitz, you get an inspiration. I walked into Studio 54, Paradise Garage, I walked into, uh, I didn't go to CBGB's, I went to the Mud Club. Um, you can walk into a place and you go, wow, just the people, the music. I was in Munich and I went to a place called Die Klappe. But they played heavy rock. But I heard, uh, 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 it's got what it takes. So tell me why can't this be with Eddie Van Halen? But that was the first time that I heard what Queen, when they did um, his guitar, turned into a synth, remember? You know, doodum 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 Radio Gaga, doodum kakin doodum kakin go meow. And I heard a guitar sound like a synth. You hear people, you see people, and then you tell, you hear people say, oh, when I went to university and then I went to this college, I met all these other people that were into the same thing as me, and it's the same when you went to a Depeche Mode gig. You were a weird fucker until you went to that gig, and then you said, oh, I'm not alone, everybody else is, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, to me, when Spanner Ballet walked in, they weren't dressed anything, they were just, they were in because Steve Strange fancied them all. Oh, Martin Kemp is so gorgeous, you know. And then they all came up to the DJ, what's that record, what's this, what's that? And I was like, have you got a synth? Like, no, we're two guitar, bass and drums. History. <laughs> the future is electronic. Meet Richard James Burgess. Who's he? He's the guy that's got the, the uh, Roland MC4. He's the guy that's got all the synths that you need and he's a drummer, and we don't play drums. We program drums. So the guitar became And I was the curator, meaning, we gotta ask Rusty, we gotta ask Rusty. So I had to go to the studio and they'd play it. And then I'd give them my two penneth. And uh, the bottom line was I helped them to create the sound of the Spandau Ballet. And while I'm on this stage, I have to say, when they asked me to come on the tour, I just said yes. They told me the money, I didn't care. No accommodation, no travel, nothing. I said, I don't care. Give me 40 dates all over Europe. I even got a lift from the, the trucker from Amsterdam to Luxembourg. But they didn't know that the girl who speaks on Faith to Grey's best friend was the British ambassador, and I stayed in the British embassy. <laughs> but I got out of a truck 
outside the British Embassy and a bloke on the door said, yeah, I said, oh, I have to, I'm staying here. We're not a hotel. I said, well, I know, just ring the bell. Anyway, then I brought the British Ambassador to their gig at a place called the Rock House in Luxembourg. A fabulous venue. Anyway, the point is about Spandau Ballet. It wasn't just Spandau Ballet. It, it was everyone. When I went to clubs in Germany, uh, including the Metropole, and I heard, um, I can't stand the rain on my window, paint German records. When I heard Zoya's B held, um, uh, no GDM. Um, when I heard records, I, I threw a sound system in a club, you know? And did you know that Ralph and, um, called me to come to the Camden Palace to play um, Kraftwerk's bike one? <sighs> 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 They to came the to Tour de France to play that on my sound system in the Camden Palace because they'd just been to the studio Britannia Row because New Order had made Blue Monday and Crawford thought, this fucking record is so good. We, we got to make our record even better. And it's in Carl's book. They, they called me up and came to the play and I put the sound system and I played their tune and they could hear it. <laughs> And um, the sound of the clubs, the big ones in Germany and New York, compared to England, were fucking brilliant. But I think they only planned on going to the studio because of Blue Monday. Then they found yes. out Britannia Road, I mean, that was a shithole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they didn't do anything. They, they just, after that... They, they found, found out them. later. So yeah. time for you to take a little breath, and then we have one question. Is, uh, yes, and then, and then we're all free and have a drink. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> Hello, Ruski. I'm Silvio. I'm a great Kid Moxie fan. And can you t uh, talk about a little bit about the, the work with her? Talk about Kid Moxie. Kid Moxie. Yeah, especially the mix. Uh, it's a great fan. record, isn't it? It, it is. You know, without being arrogant, I'm going to be arrogant. <laughs> that record's got like a million streams or something. Nobody knows who she is. I've got another one out there with um, Maylene Farmer from France. I don't know if anybody's ever heard it. They all think it's Gary Newman. But the, uh, I, I, got a, I, I, can't put a, I can't play and talk at the same time. But everybody knows what an octave is, don't they? Da, 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 Right. Um, basically, we all talk about one finger, which was uh, soft shell, punk had three chords. We got one finger. Ah, ah, sometimes I feel. Um, I'm a one finger programmer. I'm a one finger guy. You can then loop that and record that and you do all sorts of things, etc. Et so anyway, Kid, Kid Moxie, what I do is I hear songs by people and then I contact them and nobody contacted them. I'm just first. And I go, I love your song, can we work on it? And then they say yes, because nobody gives a fuck. Mm -hmm. So the point really is, is that I've got about 25 records out there like that. And then there's some where I found somebody that had half a demo and I said, yeah, let's finish it together. And then I just do my little bit. There's one I've done that I absolutely love, it's Shimmer Johnson. And I played it the other day in a dark golf club in, um, in uh, Sao Paulo. And it's nine minutes long and the, the whole room was just vibing to this bass. But it was me, I play it all, the bass and the synth and the sub bass and the whole thing. But I can't play chords. But does anybody know what a polysynth is? You don't play chords on it, you just play single notes. And that's Chris Payne, he plays single notes on his polysynth. And then he adds all the chords and the 88 notes and he does all the orchestrations. But at the end of the day, dun dun dun, dun dun da da, whoa, that's great, what is that, you know? So when I heard Kid Moxie, I just said I've got to mix this record. So I did an album called Welcome to the Remix, then I did another album called Welcome to the Remix Volume 2. And on both of them, there's about 25 different artists. So I was trying to say, there is an amazing music out there, like new men who you're here tonight. We're just not hearing it. We're just not, it's not getting to us. So I did have a radio station 
and a lot of fans are just giving up and a lot of bands are giving up a lot of people are you know like the wife said sorry you're always in your you know you're always making music why don't you give up um there is no money in it i just don't think you give up i think you just keep doing what you love and love doing what you do and if you can t keep doing that then life's fucking great and i made no money out of visage i was even cut out of visage i let a lot of people know not because i want money because i don't want my son to be fucked over and cut out so i'll just end it i sat with some coders do you know what they are people who design and build software and i said you make a file in your bedroom yeah you drag it and drop it into a platform yeah up comes 50 questions who wrote it who played on it the words who wrote the words who played the keyboards who did this who did that you press click AI goes around the world and says, there are 2,000 songs with the words love. And one of them is, love, love me do. It's the same notes. Another one is, it's love me, love, love, love. And then you say, you take your file back and you change it. Then you drag it and you drop it in again. There's only 1,000 songs. And you go back, there's only 10 songs. Until you end up with, Nobody has ever written anything like this because you changed it time and time again. And it's a totally you. There's only 88 notes. It's going to be very difficult. So the point really is, is yes, Ed Sheeran. It is fucking Marvin Gaye, you know. <laughs> it's fucking Marvin Gaye. Some judge was persuaded it's not Marvin Gaye. But if you play that to me, I never heard of it, Sherry. You play that to me, I go, fuck me, it's Marvin Gaye. All the time, listen to the charts, do a leaper. It's fucking Michael Jackson, all the time. You listen to Michael Jackson, it's fucking Hall of Notes. All the time you listen to people, and there's some judge who's 88 years old. I'm very sorry, it is Ed Sheeran, and it's, on, it's wrong. So I think there should be the Performing Rights Society should have this software and when you upload a song and say, I wrote Fade to Grey, all the other people get told, this guy uploaded a song and said he wrote it and you listen to it. What did he write? Two verses. That's my voice, Fade to Grey. Those lyrics, that's my girlfriend. So who wrote that? But I wrote Blocks on Blocks. I wrote Blocks on Blocks are all around Neolicht and Sound on Sound as I was standing on a bridge that's built so close to Daimora, the wall. I wrote that. But if you look at the credit, written by all of us. I wrote that The Anvil in a club in New York, written by all of us. Why are Coldplay still together? Written by all of them. <laughs> Ultravox, written by all of them. U2, written by all of them. <coughs> Spano Ballet, written by Mark Gary Kemp. They're split up. Everybody else, they split up. I'm not just a fucking drummer. I'm not, and that's why I told the clash, and oh, they right. told me, fuck off then. <laughs> I mean, that, that was a clear point, you're not only the drummer, I know, I introduced you like the founding member. You know what, let me just say, <laughs> but I found you know what, the you know what that beat is? It then goes, da, 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 da. Don't you want me, baby? That's a drum fill that I made in Martin Russian studio. And Martin Russian didn't know a drum machine when I walked in there. He produced the Stranglers and the Buzzcocks. When we walked in there with Billy Curry, mid you know, we went in there with the drums and the samples and the Rolands and that. I didn't sit behind a drum kit. I programmed and went, Psh! You know? And then a the guy so looks I, at you and I goes, I the perfect wow. title for your book. Uh, and then, Saki, you could take it, you could Rusty, Rusty. I found the perfect. Give me this. <laughs> <laughs> so, this book is going to be called uh, Only In It for the Money.
So you're a great music lover, like everyone who's coming out here, great music lovers. Thank you, the lovely Rusty.